paid the ultimate price. He paid the debt. So, since God cleared the debt, are you going to go back to your debt and look at your debt? Just say you owe one billion dollars. God paid one trillion dollars. Are you going to go back to your debt and live in, and just look at the debt, or are you going to live free? You know, there's a lot of people. The, the price has been paid. Sin has been paid on the cross. But you know what? They, they go back to their debt. The debt has been paid, but they go back to the debt. And what is that debt? The debt is sin. They go back because sin is comfortable. The darkness is so comfortable that why would I want to live a life separated from what's comfortable? Why do I want to live a life that's uncomfortable? Because I'm here to tell you the truth that the God of this world is Satan and he has everybody conditioned to worship him. You may not know it, and it's not your fault, it's not your problem, but we've been conditioned from generation to generation, decades to decades, to live a certain way. And the way that we live, it glorifies sin. We love, we just love to be bad. It's like, it's not even that we're bad, it's just our natural way. It's our natural way of living. God bless you, but I've seen you sleeping like on 16th Street. Praise the Lord, man. I, I hope Allah blesses you, man. I hope the Lord blesses you. Amen. God bless you, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, bro. Jesus loves you, brother. No, no, no. There's only one way, and that's Jesus, brother. But if you want to go that way, go for it, brother. I hope to see you in Jannah. Jannah. All right, all right. So Jesus paid the price. It was him. He paid the price that we can't pay. And since he paid the price, guess what? We're free. But we like our sin. Hey, you know what's crazy? Life as a born again is insane. Because the things that you've grown up and you like all your life just does not like interest you anymore. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you, on Tuesday I'm gonna go to a concert. And it's not the music I like anymore. I don't listen to that music, but I'm spending time with my sister, so it's it's family time. And I choose a family time, and I'm willing to make the sacrifice to even listen to the music just so I can spend time with my sister. Hey, I could probably save souls out there. Who knows? Let the Lord this world be done. But it's so crazy because I've listened to this music all my life. Wu Tang Clan, Nas, Busta Rhymes. I I used to listen. To, I got Wu Tang Clan tattoo on my arm. These guys. They mean something. And it's crazy. I try to listen to her music now and it's like, what is this trash? <laughs> I need to listen to some Jesus music, man. Like, your life is not the same. And it's, it's, it's amazing because God called us to be separated. He, got, he called us to be chosen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood set apart from the world. That's why he says that while we're on this earth right now, this is not our home. We don't live here. This is not my home right here. I may, I'm passing through. I'm just, I'm, I'm living with the wet. I'm just walking through and I'm just living life. But this is not my home. I'm seeking a better home. And that is the heavenly Jerusalem. That is Mount Zion. That's the new home that I am waiting for. And I want you to be there too. But I want you to be secure in this relationship that you could have with the Lord Jesus right now. You could be a tree planted by the rivers of water, drawing from the rivers of water, that you will remain, you will remain fruitful. Your, your leaves will be green. The heat will come, the seasons will come, but you will stay planted and you will stay strong where nothing withers. And that is where you can be. You could, it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. What is trust? Having faith. Does anybody have faith here? Anybody have faith? The good news, if you do have faith, all you, do, all you need is faith as small as a mustard seed. 
Do you know how small a mustard seed is? It's the smallest seed in all of the plant kingdom. And God says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to move. Hey, mountain in California, come to South Beach. And guess what? That mountain in California will come down to South Beach. Because God will take care of the rest. But all you need to do is have faith. All you need to do is trust in Him. You may have problems in your life. You may have a disease that the doctor cannot heal. It's incurable. But when you trust in the Lord, guess what? He will cure you. Because it is only God that can cure you. God will baffle your doctors. You may have a, uh, an aneurysm or you may have cancer. And they say, you know what? If you don't have this surgery, you are going to die. And you say, no. Because in my Bible, it says, by his stripes, I am healed. It says, by, in his word, that he bore my sickness. He bore my disease. And if I believe in him, I'm just like him. And guess what? Three, three weeks later, you will go back and you go for that test. But you went, you went in there with faith. And guess what? There's no trace of that cancer. There's no trace of that aneurysm. Why? Because you trusted in the Lord. And it's really simple. It's easy as one, two, three. How do you trust in the Lord? Do you trust your best friend? Do you trust your girlfriend? Do you trust your boyfriend? It doesn't take us. It doesn't take much, but it takes it takes time. It takes time to build that relationship where you can say, "Okay, I trust you in my hands." So I'm here to tell you that you can get this relationship with God, God Almighty. You can have this relationship with Him. All you need to do is. Talk. Talk to him. Talk to him when you're alone. You can talk to him when you're in the bathroom, taking him number two. You can talk to him when you're anywhere. But he wants he wants you to talk to him. And when you talk to him, guess what? He will talk back. God wants you to cast all your cares that you have. God wants you to hand over the sickness and the, the, the disease and the anger issue, everything that you have that is not part of Him. He wants you to hand it over to Him. And He wants to take care of you. Because that is a God. That is the God that I serve. That is a God that loves me so much. And He loves you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. I don't know if you heard that ever in your life, but I'm here to tell you today that Jesus, the Messiah, God himself, he loves you. And he wants to have a relationship with you. He just wants you to talk to him. And trust me, he will talk back to you. And when you have this relationship with God, I promise you, you will not be the same. You will not be the same. I don't care what you tell me. If you do remain the same, that means you never had a relationship with him. You just did it just to do it. You just did it because your, your mom and your dad was a, was a Christian and they, or they were pastors. But you know what? Being in church every Sunday does not make you a Christian. Like, no more than being in McDonald's makes you a cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got to have this relationship with him. And how do you have it? By reading the word. You know, I asked my dad, what do you know about God? Do you know anything about him? He's like, I know one thing. And he is God Almighty. I said, Amen. But you know, there's more than one thing about God. There's millions, there's billions, there's, there's infinite things about God that we don't know. But we get to know Him when we read the Bible. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going to trust somebody, I want to know that person. If I'm going to trust that, that somebody, I would want to know every single detail about them. Because if I'm going to put my life in their hands, I want to be safe knowing that whoever I put my, my whole life in their hands, that they're going to take care of me. And that's what God did. That is Jesus. He took care of it. He took care of the sin problem. And he says, hey, you may, be, you may act on it. You may do it. But it's, it's okay because you didn't know me before. But now that you know me now, I will take it all away. And you will live this new life where you're no longer that old man, but you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Where all old things have passed away and all things become new. Everything that God is, He says that you are as well. Did you know that? 
Did you know that God, Jesus said, greater works you will do on earth than what I did? Hey, all I, what I know of Jesus, he healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus, he overcame sin. Hey, guess what? And just because you believe in him, you also overcome sin. We're not waiting to just sin. We're not sin, sin making to happen. Like we're not, we're not living our life to sin. But if we do sin, we have a mediator. We have somebody that will come before us. We come before God and speak, speak to God. We have somebody that will, will be the middleman, and that is Jesus, and He forgives you. What Jesus did on the cross was a price that we couldn't pay. And guess what? Guess what takes away sin? If you want to know what takes away sin, it's blood. And not just any blood. Like, if, if somebody wanted to sacrifice me right now for the forgiveness of their sin, they'd be like, well, it would probably be really good. But if they got me right before I got saved, they'd be like, hey, you don't want to, you don't want to kill this guy. This guy's filled with sin. It's not even going to do you good. We need something innocent. We, see, we need something very pure. And that's what takes away sin. That's why Jesus had to come as a lamb. Jesus was the lamb of God. Hey, I know this guy. I met your PCS guy. Uh, God bless you, brother. Uh, Jesus came as that lamb. That's why they say Jesus was that sacrificial lamb. Jesus was that pure, holy, unblemished lamb that gave himself up. And when he gave himself up, it was like the, the perfect lamb being sacrificed to God. And his blood, his perfect blood was shed in the altar, the spiritual altar of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant of God. His blood was on the mercy seat. So when God looks at that blood, he says, Oh! Perfect, holy, blameless, beloved. And when he sees you and me, we're covered with that same blood of Jesus. So he sees everything that Jesus is as us. Come on. This is absolutely free. I'm not even asking for a million dollars or a billion dollars to tie to my church, to be part of the ministry, to serve the church. No. I'm telling you that the gospel, to have eternal life, is free. To have righteousness with God is free. To have peace with God is free. The question is, do you want it? <sighs> we are at the end of times. I cannot stress it anymore. I feel like screaming to the top of my lungs and just, ah, you know, just, ah, you know, like, <laughs> we're there. We are in the last second where lawlessness is abiding. Everything that's bad is considered good, and everything that's good is considered bad. We are in a time where it's just like the whole thing, everything went upside down. And it's like, what, what else is going to happen? We got World War III about to pop off, everybody, uh, every nation, uh, everybody's throat, everybody's just so angry. It's like, what is going on? And it seems like if you put if you put your trust in man, it's like you can't trust him because everything that you see around you is just going down. The stocks are plummeting. Uh, the the worldwide financial system is breaking. Everything is 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 not promising. Everything is on shaky ground. The foundation is weak. But I'm here to tell you that if you come to this foundation, this strong foundation, you will be rooted and you will be strong. That when the storms come, when the storms come, you will not be shaken. You will stand strong. That when the winds, when the storms come, you will not be moved. Because you are in a strong foundation. And that foundation is Jesus. Will you put your trust in Him today? He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. You have chance, you have time to come back with God. He's a little, he's a little golden nugget. You, I, I like gold, I'm pretty sure everybody else likes gold. Here's a little golden nugget. You can come back to God anytime, as long as you have breath in your lungs. But once that breath in your lungs is gone, and you die, God forbid, I'm sorry, that's all up to God now.
God bless you. God bless everybody. Shalom, shalom. Jesus loves you. I'm out. Amen, amen. Believe in God. That's it. That's all you need. That's all you need. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. If you believe, you will receive. Amen. I believe you will be sober one day. That you will not do anything, but you would just, Jesus will be your drink. Jesus is your drink. Toma la cerveza de Jesús. Jesús es tu cerveza. Jesús es mi mari. Jesús es mi todo. <laughs> Jesús es mi novia. Jesús es mi todo. Esta es la vida. Jesús es mi agua. Jesús es mi comida. Jesús es mi cama. Jesús es mi todo. Y yo, yo soy ahora, estás escuchando la corazón de Jesús. Tu, 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 tu. Oh, yo soy querido hijo de Dios. <laughs>